But here we are, it's uh, the main man, Mr. Peter Fury himself. You know what, always a pleasure to see you, Peter. You really do brighten up these dark winter days. <laughs> I need to brighten up something. I must start, I need to start looking in the mirror more and brightening myself up. <laughs> I was about to say, that would be a lovely sight to look back in the mirror. I saw one of your um, your old teammates, uh, you know, Dillian White, yes, not yesterday, a couple of days ago down at down in London, he, yeah, he's, he's keen and, and raring to go, he's, he's happy that he's on his comeback and I suppose we could start with him. Did you see his fight with Christian Hammer the other day? <coughs> I missed it but, you know, Christian Hammer, he is what he is, he is a quitter, isn't he? Yeah, he's, we've boxed against him a few times and uh, always does the same thing. As soon as he gets his stick, he's, he's lucky to get out of there. But listen, it's a comeback fight, he got a few rounds out, that was good. Speaking about like combat fights, and it, it does, there is a bit of rhyme and reason behind this. Obviously, Richard Towers, your guy with Cash Alley, I had the pleasure of sitting in the corner that Richard Towers was in on the fight night for Cash. Okay. What a colourful, colourful variation of words coming out of his mouth towards his fighter. Yeah, there was a lot of excitement going in the corner, but that's uh, Richard. Look, he's passionate. Yes. He, he deeply wants his man to win. He cares a lot about cash, so you know I, I can understand it. So look, they've done the best, and uh, that's it. You know, it's a it's an hard game, pro boxing. He definitely is, because I saw him literally like tear him to shreds through the fight. But obviously, cash got stopped by Joel Joyce, and then he literally almost like picked him up and put a blanket around him and took him out the ring and and gave him that reassuring talk. It's almost like he just switched into like from strict dad mold to caring mum mold. Richard Towers, what a character. He is a character. Uh, he's a good a good friend of mine, Richard, a nice big fellow, and uh, he's so um, he's placid, and this is it, the sport. You know, it's, uh, it carries a lot of emotion. Joel Joyce's performance then, that on the night, what did you think about that? Obviously, he's coming off the two losses um, with Zili Zhang. How did you rate his performance? This is his comeback fight too. I think we can all look, you can't go off comeback fights, especially with the heavyweights. They've got to get into it. There's a lot of improvements to be made. Sure there is. You know, you're not going to see the perfect article. So, you know, he's back and, um, yeah, he's back in the mix and uh, he's got some more of the fights coming up. The fight wasn't impressive at all. You know, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. It wasn't. It wasn't a good fight to watch. It wasn't impressive, but... He done what he had to do and he got the win. And he got 10 rounds out, which has helped him a lot. You know, when you look at fighters' careers, Peter, there's been a, a, you know, a little bit of speculation because of the damage, obviously, that Zhang did throughout the two fights. Boxing public, you know, the fans speculating, probably more on a caring tip, who's like, should he still carry on fighting? Should he, you know, should this be it for him now? And Maybe, like you said, you know, you can't really judge off combat fights, but what do you see happening with Joel Joyce moving forward, Peter? Joe Joyce has just got, he's got a terrific engine. He throws a lot of punches when he's on form. And the thing is, Joe Joyce has got to work on his defence because otherwise he's going to hit the same problem. You know, but look, styles make fights, you know. Look what Joe Joyce done to Parker. Look where Parker is now. So it's all about taking stock of what your flaws are and correcting the flaws out. And Joe Joyce is an articulate, he's a clever fellow. I know Big Joe well. You know, he's, he's not somebody that's behind the door. He's, he's sharp, but he needs to get sharp and look at his weaknesses because his defence is all over the place. When you're th that far gone in your career, obviously he's got the extensive amateur career, he's an Olympian and obviously he came into professional boxing late. How does then a fighter then have to go back to those basics and then look at, you know, defence? Because he's more fighting out of habit now. He's, he's got, you know, it's like the, what they're saying, they can't, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Do you think that you can learn? I think, you know, it's all about minor uh, tweaks in this game. So, yeah, he, he, can, uh, he, can, he can come again. He can, listen, he can come again, Big Joe. But, you know, look, you can't, you can't walk through heavyweights with your face. You've got a box. This game's a skill. It's heavyweight boxing. And look, the giants in there, they can all punch. There is nobody that can't punch. If you get it, you get it right, you're gone. And you know, it's not the, it's not the punches that hurt. It's, it's, the, it's the ones you don't see and you don't feel all of a sudden. You, you, your legs ain't there no more and you, you, you're on the floor.
So that, that's what it is. So you have to, you have to, uh, for Joe Joyce, he's got to think about that. The engine's good, the way, he, the way he goes on. He might look a little bit, you know, clumbersome, but he's not. When you're in front of him, he's awkward. He's got something about him, yeah? He's just got to get that defence better. However he, however he does that, you know, may, maybe somebody like Big Joe is just putting his hands up around, around his head, stepping, stepping, dump, jab, coming in and releasing his shots. At least he's blocking them and he's, he's, he needs to move his head more offside. It's not about being this and being a slickster, you know. It's about where the shots are coming from and, st and step out of that straight range. You know, look, when a shot's moving this way or it's moving that way, the power's gone out of it. It's the straight ones that's the problem, because that's where the maximum force is. So take, 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 the, take the power off by where you're, putting your, where you're putting your face, basically. You know, when they say you learn something new every day, and there's me thinking I understood a little bit of boxing, and I guess that's just basic science. It is going to work like that, isn't it, Peter? It is going to work. Well, listen, I always said, you know, get a stick. If it's got a kink in it, you can push it through the floor. If it hasn't, it can be, a thin, it can be razor blade thin, and you can stand on it. It's the same with the same with shots. If they're coming in straight and they're accurate, they're a problem. Bend them, move them off centre, text them out. So what do you think about a match with him and um, Dillian White? You know, Dillian, I think uh, there's some rumblings that, and they're kind of like from the fans, we've suggested that's a fight that we'd like to see. But then we've also had Joel Parker put out uh, almost like a single, a song, talking about who wants to run it back with Dillian White. Which fight would you take? Which fight would you like to see, Peter? I think they're all good fights, you know, they can fight each other. I think uh, Joe Joyce and Dillian White's a good one. Yeah. From where they're, from where they're at, because he's had a layoff Dillian, hasn't he? Yeah. Joe Joyce is coming back. I think that's, that's a good fight to be made. And how do you see it going with those two? I know you say stars make fights, and it is on the night, but what do you see as advantages of both that they can use against each other? Dillian, Dillian's a big puncher, you know, he's got, a, he's got a tremendous left hook, you know, so if he, if he gets that home, it can be a problem. But, you know, it's, it, you know, well, Joe Joyce has got a very good engine. So what's going to happen in that fight? It's a bit like the one we seen the other, yesterday, you know, it's a bit to and fro in, isn't it? So it'd be a good fight to be made. It would be a good fight. Both would bring it and, you know, let's look to him. We've got a touch on yesterday's fight. You know, I was sat at home doing a YouTube live. I've lost my voice, you saw, from screaming down the microphone to the viewers that were watching. How entertaining was that fight? And, and what, in your opinion, as it does for the British heavyweight division? I think it does wonders for it because you've got to give uh, both of them max credit. First of all, you've got to give Wardley credit because it showed in there the boxing experience against somebody who's not really a boxer, who's come from that... Uh, whatever it is, white-collar white collar job, yeah? So, to when it wasn't working for Wardley, Wardley stepped on him and said, let's have it, and he brought it, because he knew he had to brought it. That's a sign of a champion that does that. Yeah, so maximum credit for him. Um, with Fraser, he, he held his, he, as they say, he held his shit together. You know, he, uh, he got it with a good shot. It was a good shot that got him, uh, actually. It was on the end of the punch, but it got him clean. So he went down. And, um, you know, he got up and I said, uh, I was watching it and I, I said to myself, you know, let's see what he does now. This will show where he's at. You know, when he got up, obviously the bell went, but he was, he, whether the bell would have went or not, he'd regained himself. I like the way uh, Fraser was very calm about things. Okay. You know, and he got up and he got back to his game plan, stuck to his game and he picked away and chipped away and he, and he done well. Yeah. Listen, they both need massive credit for what they've done there. It was, a, it was a good fight for, <laughs> I think I put a tweet out before and I said, you know, you something, these heavyweights for the British title, I said, brings the best out of them. Yeah. I think I said something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we wasn't wrong because we seen the best. I was over the moon with that fight. I watched it every round and I can't uh, applaud the two of them enough. Forget the skill set, forget this, forget that. Listen, it was a terrific fight. And now, <laughs> and, you know, big phrases, you know, he's six seventh that was his going into it well he's had six pro fights hasn't really done anything with it the pro the pro side and to do what he did and you know but you know obviously 
they've both had extremely hard training camps. They've worked extremely hard to get through it. So, you know, full credit to him. And the shots he was taking, uh, Wardley, flush. You know, so, listen, you can only give him maximum credit. That, you know, it was, a, it was a great fight. It was, it was ebbing and flowing all the time. What we seem to enjoy about it, and I think what made it exciting for the fans is the whole lead up. Everyone, well, majority of people seem to be Team Wardley. Like you said, he'd, he'd had X amount of fights. I think this was his, either his 17th or his 18th fight. His 18th. Yeah, you can half it down for, you know, Fraser Clark. You can say the opponents that he's had haven't really tested him. So everybody was sort of like putting Fraser on the back foot. But I was saying, I've seen him training. I know how much he wants this. And you're going to see a different side to him. So when you're going in there, Peter, and you're, even though you're the one with a fantastic amateur pedigree, but you're still the underdog, the other fighter is even coming across as the favourite to the promoter, that pressure that Fraser had to deal with, and, he's, and he still comes through, albeit a draw, but it was a good fight. It was a very good fight. And, you know, both fighters has got pressure going into that fight. You know, one's a white collar fighter. Uh, Do you think there was a lot of pressure on him, even being definitely, a white collar fighter? Definitely, as well. The pressure on, on both of them. It's a, it's a, for a British title, there's a lot at stake. So the pressure's on for both fighters. I thought they conducted themselves well. They came and give us, uh, <laughs> to give definitely good entertainment. It was a cracking fight. What do you think they should do now? If you know, if you were involved in any of their teams, would you advise that you know Fabio take the? Obviously, you have to rest and recuperation because they've got some healing to do. We've seen that. But would you advise a rematch for Fabio, or has Fabio done enough at British level to move on? And then maybe that belt gets vacated, and Fraser takes on a you know another uh, British contender. Um. I'm one of these, you know, if it doesn't work first time, keep banging the door okay. down. So for me, uh, you know, yeah, they should fight again. Why not? Yeah. They're, all they've got to do is go back to the gym and work on what they need to improve on. There's always things every fighter can improve on. They've got to work on the, they've got to work on the floors and make it better. As far as Wardley's concerned, he's, he's too far leaned back. He puts too much weight on the back leg. So to come forward, he's got to, he's got to travel a long way and leaves himself open because he's too square. All these type of things he needs to work on. Um, big, big Fraser, he'll work on it, you know, where he's got to be a little bit more comfortable on the inside, be able to block up better, you know, and just pace himself a little bit better. His boxing's very good, he's sharp, his jabs, excellent, all that. All the bread and butter stuff works a treat for him. And that's all you need in heavyweight boxing, to be fair, you know, so, He's doing, um, he's doing what he needs to do. So that's it. Bit of Fraser where, you know, sometimes he backs off and that's where it's like fanning the flames, you know, needs to tie up the opponents better. And uh, so that's for Fraser and that's for Wardley. That's what I see. Correct them. And then it's a different ball game altogether for both of them. We've got to move on to young Huey, Huey Fury, who we've Wanted to see back in the ring for a minute and finally, April the 20th, he's back out. Talk to us about Huey, what he's been up to and what we can expect from him on April the 20th. Uh, just he's coming back, so we'll see. You know, when that bell goes, we can expect anything. So let's have a look. But he's back and he's training hard, he's sparring all the time. So that's it. He's, uh, it's been a long time for him and uh, let's get him back active. One of the things that I think the viewers don't know albeit Huey hasn't been in the ring in front of our eyes, you know, putting on shows for us. He hasn't left the gym, has he? He's been training almost continuously, getting that sparring and still getting that work in. He's never left, he's never walked away from the sport, maybe from the spotlight, but not the sport. Yeah, he's not walked away from it. He's always been involved, not sparring so much. So now it's, uh, he's, he's camps on, he's, he's back doing it properly, but he's always been in and out of the gym doing little bits. But you know, he's, he's had to correct his issues. You know, he's had a lot of allergy issues as well. So, um, but look, he's over all that and he's, uh, he's back. And that is something that I think us boxing fans, we don't understand that obviously fighters have other issues as well. You mentioned there that allergies. So how is that, those health problems as it were, like hindered his boxing progress, his career path? 
Well, he's a full-blown celiac, you know, but he's obviously he he hasn't re look. You can go to a restaurant, you can have a bit of food, and they say, "Oh, it's clean food," but it's not, you know. So you've got to be super careful when you're like that. You got to you got to eat no no dairy, no gluten, no wheat. You know, your food's got to be ultra clean. So um, just things like that. But it takes it takes time to iron these problems out. It's, once we know, it's easy. It's when you don't know and you're searching for answers, and there's always a problem. You know, there's always like blisters breaking out where the allergies are coming out to the rashes and stuff. So all these things, but you know, look, this is heavyweight boxing. You've got to be 100% otherwise don't box. Young Matty Harris, you're going into, I believe now a second camp with him, but I want to reflect on his, uh, you know, his initial performance. Some of the feedback that some of the boxing public said is, we just expected more. Talk to us fans about that expectations and why maybe we need to just take a seat and just let it run no i can agree we should see more from matt matt was one paced in there you know but it's his first fight back you know he uh he's done a lot of things he's working a lot of things there but he's got a um matt's got a matt's got a lot of work to do he's uh he's got a up his pace look boxing's a sprint it revolves it's zero to 60, back down again. Zero to 60, back down again. You've got to go through your gears. You can't be a Ferrari and stuck in first gear. You've got to go through your gears and back down again, you know? So let's see next time he fights, I'll see a lot better pace, you know, a lot more spite in his shots, not trying to reserve the tank. Because if you're trying to reserve your tank, then you've got no tank. Protecting a tank, protecting a tank is with the experience. You know, you're boxing in there, you know. Obviously, you've got to protect your tank, but to a certain level, not where you want paste and you ain't that, and you're just going through the motions, because that's what it looked like. And that's all because he didn't adjust his pace. But he's got a lot of work to do. I want to see more improvements on the inside, yeah. I want to see him using his height better. Um, but he's, he's got a lot of natural ability. You know, it's... Uh, we just need... Um, we just need some hardcore polish to polish that diamond to make it come out. But it, 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 it takes time talking to him, it takes time. And you know, look, they're at a, he's at a low stage uh, and he's got to know where he's at. You know, get his feet on the floor, which he is. You know, that loss will have done him the world of good. And he's got to come back and he's just got to do better. He's got to do better. Can't go out to the gym and think at all. I'm not thinking about this job. He's got to live. If you want to be a world champion boxer, you've got to live, breathe, sleep this game. How do you know then? Like you said, if, if you want to be a champion, there's things that you've got to do. You mentioned there about Fabio earlier. He could have, he could have quit. He could have, you know, the doctors could have said, forget it. But he stayed in there. What is it, Peter, that makes just a boxer, credit to them, to a champion where is that difference Peter and I know you would have seen this with the amount of fighters that you've dealt with you know the fighting blood that is in your family anyway what, what is it that, that you know that that is a champion you can do anything you know you can do anything with heart you know on a, you know on determination you know and that never say never attitude you know so that, that's what makes champions really you know look He's got two arms and two legs across that ring. You can make anything hard work of anything. If you simplify it down, yeah, get your technique right, trust in your process, yeah, and, and do your thing. And when it's working well in the sparring, it's working well in your boxing. You've got to find that niche where you're in that zone where you're comfortable, where you think, whatever happens, I can cover this, you know? Once you're there, and it's there through being clever, smart, thinking about your game, analyzing it. It ain't just for your trainer to analyze it. You analyze it. I'll tell you, yeah, and then you analyze it and work it out because I'm talking outside of the ropes. I ain't, I'm not in there doing it. So I'm telling you what to do, yeah? You fucking get in them ropes and do it when you're being it back, which is not an easy thing to do, but they've got to do it in there. So I can talk for England, because I'm a fat old man, nearly 60, yeah? And I ain't getting in there, so it's easy for me to talk. But easy or not, 
I need to park that information and you need to get on and practice it. And when you can do it where you're comfortable in there, yeah, and we can see it and go, yes, that works, then that's fine. Have you ever had to have a fight, Aaron? It could have been somebody that maybe you started training and you're not training them anymore, where they they didn't really have that like that heart, that grit, and you've had to make the like kind of like hard decision to say, is this really for you? And what has that been like emotionally for the fighters? Because I know the fighters give off this aura that they're you know these big hard men, but they're quite emotional beings, aren't they? In the sport, of course it is. It's a roller coaster. It's a hard game. But you've either got it or you ain't. And the thing is, I can't waste their time. I certainly can't waste my own. And you know, you've got sometimes fighters has got to understand. And you know, it's, it's things that can happen. I've had fighters, of course I have. And I can see it's not just meant for them. And rather than see them getting brain damage, you know, I'd rather see them not do it. But I, I'm not in the sport to get them a payday or, or whatever. I'm in the sport to do let them excel and do great things. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. I've got better things to do with my time. I'm not somebody who's going to turn up a local all fighter and get him on, get his pay check, and he's going home. You know, find somebody else to do that. Get on the journeyman circuit. You know, but um, there is fighters like that. And sometimes fighters, they don't realize it. But you've got to have that strict dedication. And um, yes, a lot of. Listen. There's hundreds of thousands of boxers in the world, only few make it. So that tells its own story. When you know that, like, what makes a, you know, what makes a decent coach and a coach that is trustworthy, like you said, a coach that's not just lurking? Because you get these young fighters, they're, they're tipped to be the, you know, God's gift, their next best thing. And then you may get some coaches that are looking and, and seeing those pound signs. You said there, you're not necessarily in it for the money. But what makes your I coaching... Yeah. <laughs> I've been in this boxing for donkey's years. <laughs> There's no money to be made, ain't made any. Not for me, the fighters make it, don't they? So what is it that makes you more different to like other coaches? Because I know you're not somebody that, you know, blows his own trumpet. You're not that guy. You're in the shadows. Everyone knows who you are, but you're not on stage saying, look at me. You know what I want to do? I want to. Uh, why I'm in this sport? Because I want the fighters to do very well that I work with, you know, and that's a pleasure I get. You know, I want to see them do well, lift these titles, and then that's a fulfilment. It's a challenge that's done. That's where I get it. That's what makes me do it every day. Now listen, I'm a nobody. Listen, let me just tell you, yeah. When you're in the middle of the sea, right, and you're bobbing up and down in it, can anybody see you or not? If you more than 600 yards, you become nothing. You know more than a fly. We're irrelevant. Our skin and bone is going to be decomposed, nothing. We are nothing. It's what's inside of there that makes the man and makes the woman, the heart, the soul. That's it. Nobody's above anybody. And I'm certainly not above anybody. I'm not the best trainer in the world. I'm probably totally eccentric. But I know this sport because I'm involved in it. And that's it. If I didn't think, if I didn't know this board, I certainly wouldn't be doing it. It's too hard. And finally, we've got to touch on young James Dean Fury. I saw that he, he's winning yet again. He's growing in confidence. I've just been watching him sparring. He's a lovely kid, brave kid, but he's got that fury, definitely got that fury rhythm and movement. He's got the movement, he's got the rhythm, and he's coming on. He's getting a lot better. He is. James Dean's doing very well. He's getting a lot better. He's improving. And let's see. Listen, these ABAs, he's got a fair way to go yet. But let's see. What is the trajectory with James? What are you looking to do with him? I know you've just mentioned ABA there. He'll turn over when he's 20. Okay. Yeah. Do you think that the amateurs should have an age limit on when you can like stay in the amateurs? Because that's been another thing where they've been saying, are oh, the amateurs staying amateurs for too long? I think so. Listen, how many amateur fights do they need? If they're getting paid well and they want to win an Olympic medal, that's different. But, you know, for me, if he can get the ABAs and do a bit more, you know, 20, 21, whatever it is, we'll see how he goes. And he'll turn over when he's developed and he's mature enough. Brilliant stuff, Peter. I'm going to leave it there because we're coming up to half an hour. I know you've travelled down from up north to the lovely city of Birmingham. 
But as per yeah. usual, so, yeah. Max, Max uh, McCracken to have us in his gym. He's help, helping us out with Solomon Deakers and stuff, so good sparring, so it's uh, perfect. And uh, I want to give Max a big shout out. Lovely fella he is. We love it. Listen, October Red, with the clever, intelligent gentleman. But don't mess with him. Don't cross him, Peter Fury. I don't know. Listen, <laughs> I hope nobody crosses with me. All I want to do is go back, have a cup of tea or sandwich, just sit in the garden. And have a glass of wine. And a, oh, a bottle. Yeah. And do some tweets. A bottle or two and a few tweets, yeah. That's it. We're no, we have a few tweets where I'm in my house and nobody can get me in, isn't it? People say I'm toxic and honestly, I don't care.